Hey, Stargazers. My name is Nick. I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium. I want to welcome you to Skywatch Weekly, a new series of videos we'll be releasing to help introduce you to some of the wonders of the night sky that you can see from a lot of places, even places with a lot of light pollution, like Chicago. And a lot of the objects we'll talk about will be visible even from indoors, as long as you have a window that faces the right direction and you're looking at the right time. So lots of exciting things to get to. So let's get right to it. We're going to be using a software program here called Digistar. This is what we use under the domes at the Adler. And we're going to begin facing west. So we're recording this for April 15th. And over the next week or so, a lot of these same things still visible in the west. But catch them while you can. Over here we've got a wintertime sky that is fast disappearing and also a beautiful bright planet that's been making a great appearance for all of 2020 so far. But at least for the evening sky that's going to be ending soon. Let's begin with that planet that is Venus. Super bright. If you're looking in the western sky, you see something bright over there, that's going to be Venus. Now, it's been doing that over the last several months. So if you've been out walking the dog or something, wonder what is that bright thing over there? Most likely Venus, the brightest point of light in the sky right now, in the nighttime sky. So give it a look for sure. Now, it's amongst uh, a series of wintertime constellations here that you should definitely give a look for. The centerpiece of which is going to be Orion the Hunter, making a, sort of his last hurrah here in mid-April. So, over the next couple of weeks, look for Orion with that bright belt of three stars. Now, you can use that belt to sort of point. You can go either right or left, kind of parallel to the horizon at this time of the year. If you point to the right, you're going to get to a V shape of stars. That's Taurus, the bull, one of our zodiac signs. So, you're oftentimes going to see Venus or other planets or perhaps even the moon amongst that path uh, there with Taurus. So good look for Taurus as well. And if you continue that line kind of past where Venus is right now, you're going to see a beautiful cluster of stars called the Pleiades. If you were looking earlier this month, Venus and the Pleiades were basically in the exact same part of the sky, a, a beautiful conjunction there. Now they've since uh, separated a little bit, but still well worth looking for that beautiful cluster. The Pleiades visible through Chicago's light pollution. If you know just where to look, and a great way to know where to look is going to be that belt of Orion. Now, pointing the other way using that belt, you get to a very bright star. In fact, the brightest star in the nighttime sky, the star Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S. If you ever see anything brighter than Sirius that looks like a star, that's going to be a planet, for instance, Venus right now, easily outshining Sirius. But uh, Sirius there, sometimes called the Dog Star, part of Canis Major, the big dog, one of the hunting companions for Orion. And in fact, above Sirius, pretty high up in the sky right now after sunset, is going to be this star here called Procyon. Procyon, part of the little dog, Canis Minor. So two hunting companions here for Orion in that western sky, and also Venus joining that, at least for the time being. Venus, though, getting lower and lower in the sky every night. It's going to be pretty noticeable. And uh, by the end of May, very tough to see. So you want to catch it, at least for the evening sky, while you can. After that, it's going to be flipping to more of a morning planet. And speaking of morning planets, we've got a few of those to look for right now. So we're going to fast forward in time. We're going to go to about two hours before sunrise tomorrow morning. And this will be the case really over the next week or so. You get to see these planets uh, basically in the same orientation. But if you do happen to be looking very early in the morning, on uh, the morning of April 16th, you will see the moon joining them as well, right down to the very bottom of your screen there. That's the moon. Joining these three bright planets, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter, reading from left to right there and also in order of brightness. Jupiter very bright right now. Saturn almost as bright. Mars a little bit tough. Uh, perhaps not to see but to identify amongst some of the other stars there. Uh, but it does have that distinctive reddish orangish glow there that reflected sunlight off of that rusty red soil. Mars though on the move. Uh, every morning you're really going to see it a little bit farther away from those two planets and uh, eventually it's going to be quite uh, quite distinct, uh, pretty far separated. So over the next week or so, do give a look uh, for that planet Mars. 
Well, that's what we're going to cover for this week. And you might be saying, well, wait a second, that's it? Well, it's certainly not it, but we don't want to overwhelm you with too much. Just a few cool things to look for uh, over the next week or so. If this does, though, whet your appetite. You're wondering, okay, well, well, what else can I see when I'm out there? Well, there's a whole host of really great stargazing apps and stargazing uh, software to use. As far as the apps go, one that I would recommend is called Stellarium. Uh, You're looking here at the mobile version. Uh, There's a free version of this. It's pretty robust and also free, which doesn't hurt. You can get outside, help you identify a lot of the things uh, that are visible. Uh, You can also change the date, change the time, especially useful if you're wondering what that thing was that you saw a couple nights ago. Especially useful as well, turning on constellation boundaries, drawings, stick figures as well. Really helps you get familiar with with, uh, what's in the sky, in this sky that we all share. Also well worth a look and visiting all the time would be the Adler Planetarium website, adlerplanetarium.org. All sorts of content here updated on a regular basis, especially I want to draw your attention to the Adler Scope, our blog series. There we've got things like the Adler Skywatch for the month of April, that coming out monthly, updates on how we're weathering the social distancing and exciting things to look for uh, in space. So that's what we got for you this week, but please leave some comments and uh, definitely subscribe. Would encourage you, if you have questions or uh, something else you want us to cover in later episodes, definitely let us know. And we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Also, follow us on Facebook, also Twitter and Instagram, all sorts of options there for following us on social media. So we hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you get out there and have a chance to look for this uh, content on your own. Otherwise, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks so much.